I really like this shirt. I don't know if you can tell behind my 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 the bulk of my dog, but it's like a tie dye Star Wars, and the tie dye looks like the hyperspace tube. Pretty cool. Yesterday I rolled credits on uh, Star Wars Jedi Survivor by Respawn Entertainment. It's a good game. But I had a very specific thought that I wanted to get out. Or two, I guess it's two very specific thoughts that I wanted to get out about the game and kind of tie them back to my broader interests in gaming recently. And that's that in Star Wars Jedi Survivor, you can, in addition to the excellent combat and exploration, you can cultivate a garden and stock a fish tank in the saloon on Koba. And that rocks. That's super cool. In Jedi Fallen Order, on the Mantis, there was like a strip of the inner hull where you could find seeds and, and Grease would help you plant them. You know, tiny, just tiny little space on this, this fairly cramped ship. But it was neat to me that they dedicated, in-universe, they dedicated a section of the ship to agriculture and, you know, cultivation words. And that was actually the first thing that I checked on the Mantis when I booted up uh, Jedi Survivor. Once you finally get back to the Mantis after the whole opening kind of Coruscant tutorial section, I went and I looked in that part of the ship to see if there were still plants there, but it was just like knickknacks. And I was like, oh, that's kind of disappointing. But, you know, I guess Cal has the ship now and he's, you know, doing his own thing with it. So then when the tutorial prompt came up later on Koba that said rooftop garden, I gasped. <gasps> There is a place that I can grow stuff, and it's even more expansive than before. And that was really, really cool. And as I was playing through the game, and then I got to the part where it's like, hey, here's an aquarium that you can, you can put fish in. You can go out and, and explore Koba with this starfish-clad little aquatic alien who will catch fish for you and bring them back to the tank. I was thinking to myself, why is this so interesting to me? How, why, why is this a, a facet of gaming, a facet of, of gameplay that... I've really seemed to enjoy a couple years. And I think it really, it goes back all the way to the Chow Garden in Sonic Adventure 2. I remember, you know, liking that game a lot, playing that game a lot, but always bothering my friends when I was over at his house. I'm like, let's just, let me, let me just play, you know, the Chow Garden for a little bit. I want to, want to hang out in there. want to luxuriate in that world for a bit. And then obviously games like Original Flavor, Animal Crossing that had the museum where you could, you could catch bugs and catch fish. And then I did make a video here on the channel when New Horizons came out because that aquarium and insect exhibit is crazy. The amount of depth that Nintendo added to the museum in that game, what they did specifically with the aquarium where the tanks kind of evolved as you got more fish in them was just super cool. And to be able then to walk around the completed aquarium and see all these fish and there's, you know, there's the huge open ocean tank with like the whale shark and the swordfish and the sunfish and all these, these, these huge creatures. And then they've got like the abyssal area with the colacanth and, and all the kind of the deep sea critters. Just so cool. Actually preceding that also was Monster Hunter World, which had a whole section in your player owned space your little your little house had like this outdoor patio -y section where you could show off the endemic life that you'd caught the bugs and and fish you know very similar to what animal crossing did but you you know could sit down and you could feed feed the fish and you could feed the bugs and that was just i just really loved when these these kind of Animal Crossing is not a high octane game, but Monster Hunter, it's this big game where you're just going around and you're doing these like, you know, big anime takedowns of giant dinosaurs. And then you can come back and just kind of have this quiet moment with all the little, the little natural creatures that you found. So that then brings us back to Jedi Survivor. And why do I have this fascination with these little distractions of gardening and fishing? And I don't know. I think it's it's honestly, it's probably because in recent years, I have cultivated kind of a real world interest in those things. I've always had an interest in oceans, specifically going back to a, a National Geographic documentary called Jewels of the Caribbean, which was narrated by the arbiter himself, Keith David. A baby loggerhead turtle emerges from the sand to greet its first day. That's just such an interesting facet of the natural world that um, I think specifically my gateway drug into that was sharks 
what young boy is not fascinated with sharks at some point and you me- you memorize big 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 words like ampullae of lorenzini to try to you know flex on your friends about how cool your knowledge of sharks is but then more recently after we after we moved from florida my wife took me to a nursery here in illinois i picked out a couple of plants and really found an enjoyment in in taking care of them but finding a a real world appreciation for those things i guess it's then very neat to me where in a game i can take care of like these fictionalized versions of the same things maybe there's a weird irony that then i'm taking care of this garden and finding these fish and then i'm going out and gleefully slaughtering all sorts of other native flora and fauna so i i mean yeah certainly there's a little bit of dissonance there but it's fun to still be able to to have this little garden and catch these little fish and and hang out with this weird funky little alien guy on his weird funky little alien boat and having him tell me tales of the fish factual information about them and and personal stories from from his own life about encounters with these creatures i kind of assume there's going to be a third of these respawn jedi games yeah maybe maybe let me capture the big the big creatures the the rancors and the those weird wampa lookalikes and uh Oingo Boingo, that's not his name, but you know who I'm talking about. Yeah, and I can just hang out with them. Give them little pets on the head. That would be cool. You can pet the other tameable creatures, which is cool. I'm big into it. Those are some of my thoughts about Star Wars Jedi Survivor by Respawn Entertainment. Yeah, that's all I got. I'm Jake Terrio. This is Subpixel. If you liked this video, tell me why. And leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And, um... You'll get more of my unfiltered thoughts at a later date. Thanks for watching.